Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli. Welcome back out in the shop. We are continuing our talk on a must-have lure in your box. You're listening to part three of the ultimate guide to suspending jerk baits. If you've been following along in this series, man, by now you know, you know that you have to have one of these. You know you have to own a suspending jerk bait. Uh, the why is simple. Um, it's a versatile lure. It's good in uh, every seasonality, every water temperature. Uh, it's pretty good in every type of water, pond, river, lake, stream, reservoir. The only place it's not great is super dirty water. Besides that, this is a versatile lure. It ca catches suspended fish, but biggest factor, it catches fish that are not hungry. We're gonna make them react. On uh, the last one, we talked about a cadence and the rhythm of your twitches and jerks, right? The movement of that bait. It's all imparted by you. We talked about how to find that rhythm. We talked about how to make that lure dance and twitch to make those fish bite. We got a lot of great information in that last one, and that was an important segment. But now, in this third part, we're really gonna start dialing it in even more. We're really gonna get tricky now, and we're gonna get so specific that we're gonna talk about the little things that can make a big difference with a suspending jerk bait. And those little things, you know, it's funny because you say suspending jerk bait, and you think that every time the lure should just hover in the middle of the water column, right? Just sit horizontally motionless on those pauses in the middle of the water column. 100% there are times when that works, and we're gonna talk about that. But there are times when having that bait be nose down and just barely sink, like I mean sink super slow, where you're gonna get more bites. You're gonna make more fish react. There are also times when having that bait head up, slightly head up and slightly floating, rising ever so slow, can get more bites. And in this segment, we're really gonna flush that out. We're gonna talk about when you want that, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, why you want that, and then we're gonna get into how to get that bait to do that, how to achieve it. And uh, we're gonna be talking about rapala lures and how you can modify any jerk bait, suspending jerk bait you're using, any brand, we can make it do that. We can make it do one of those three things all on our own, okay? All right, let's talk about the, the, the why and the when, okay? Why do we want those lures to have those subtle differences? And when? When should we use a true suspending versus a nose down or a head up? And the, the when and the why are really specifically matched to the conditions, okay? The conditions. So when we pick this jerk bait out of our box, uh, I don't care what season it is, right? We mentioned that. I don't care if it's spring, pre-spawn, or if it's post-spawn, early summer, late summer, early fall, late fall, winter. When you pick that, I'm gonna give you a, a, a when and why, a when and how, why to do that, right? Why you want it to be neutral, so it's totally horizontal, suspended, nose up, floating, nose down, sinking. Here it goes, you ready? And it's directly related to conditions. And here's my rule of thumb. When the conditions are stable, when the conditions are stable and there isn't a change, there isn't a, a rise or fall of water temperature or baromic pressure, things are just steady, okay? Things are steady, Eddie. Um, you're fishing in the dead of winter, okay? You're fishing in the dead of winter 
and the water temperature has been 52 degrees for a week. The day you're fishing, it's 52 degrees. There's no cold front coming. There's no rise in water temperature. There's no fall in water temperature. There's no cold front. There's no fall in baronic pressure rising. Things are steady. When things are steady in the environment with your conditions, you want a suspending jerkbait that just sits horizontally, suspends perfectly. It doesn't rise or float. It just sits. That's the perfect conditions for a suspending jerkbait that truly suspends, that just sits there horizontally, okay? Steady conditions, no changes, steady jerkbait, right? It's a good little rule of thumb to remember. Steady conditions, steady jerkbait. Steady in the middle of the water column, doesn't rise, doesn't sink, it just suspends, okay? Real easy rule, but here it goes. Based on conditions, and remember, all we're doing here is we're building a better mousetrap. We are making these mods or picking the baits to get the maximum amount of bites. I'm not trying to tell you that a true suspending jerkbait won't get bites in these other situations, but it will get less bites than being totally dialed with what we're about to talk about, okay? So this is, this is trick stuff in this third part. This is stuff to get you seven bites instead of four, or 10 bites instead of eight, right? This is to get you more bites and to put more fish in the boat. All right, steady conditions, steady jerkbait. What about falling conditions? deteriorating conditions, right? Now, now that the conditions, the environment, the water temperature is gone negative, it's taken a turn for the worst. So let's use that same example. We're fishing in the dead of winter. The water temperature has been 52 for a week. The day that you go and fish, a major cold front hits. It's post frontal, it's bluebird. The pressure is rising and the water temperature's falling. The fish are going downhill, right? The fishing has gone down. So downward conditions, downward facing jerkbait and that slow sink, right? All we're doing in this theory, this mod theory, this trick theory, is we're getting the jerkbait to match the conditions. So if we're fishing in the dead of winter and we're fishing in a cold front where our water temperature's falling, I want that jerkbait now to be nose down and to sink very slowly, to barely sink, to sink super slowly. And the reason for that is we're matching the conditions. We're matching the conditions. So after I get done talking about this theory, I'm gonna show you how to pick the bait or make the bait. We're gonna look at these mods that we're gonna take a, a true suspending jerk bait. We're gonna get it to be head down. I want it in that head down position and I want it to barely sink on the pause, okay? And that position and motion of that bait in falling conditions, cold, you know, cold front, you know, downturn, downward facing, right? It's gonna get more bites. And if you think about why, think about what happens naturally in the environment. When things tank and get super cold or, or you know, that downturn happens, bait and fish get in a mode where they go down. They get in a negative mode. The bait fish are dying, the bait fish get lethargic, the bait fish go head down, and a lot of times, instead of just sitting there, they start to fade away real slow. They start to swim real slow. That's what we're mimicking. All right, the last scenario, and then we'll get into how to do this, is what about conditions that are on the upswing? Conditions that are on the upturn for the better. Now it's a warmer day. It's a warmer week. The water temperature is now rising. 
the conditions are getting better. That, barom that barometer, instead of it being steady, instead of it rising, now the barometer's falling, which is good, right? That's an upturn, that's a good thing. When the water's warming, the bite is good, the barometer's falling, we actually want a suspending jerk bait that sits nose up, slightly nose up, and floats up just slightly. A super slow riser, right? Steady conditions, horizontal steady bait. Falling conditions, nose down, falling bait. Rising conditions, upward, uptrend of things, good conditions, nose up, right? Up, up. Nose up, on the pause, slightly rising. Just like the slightly falling jerk bait, think about how natural that is when things are getting good, right? Let's use that same example. Fishing in the winter. Water temperature is 52 for a week straight. All of a sudden, you have a little warming trend. You launch, there's a storm coming in two days, it's starting to get cloudy. You look at your water temperature gauge, it rose two degrees overnight. Now it's 54 degree water. Things are get going up. So your forage naturally now, instead of it being down and slowly fading, now it's looking up. Now it's saying, the forage is saying, man, it's getting warmer. We wanna mimic that. And that slow rise of now something trying to get away from that fish, trying to, you know, it's warmer, that, fit, that bait has more activity, that's gonna be a more natural response to those fish. Remember, all these mods we're talking about, I'm gonna show you how to do them, it's to help you catch more fish. Catch two, three, four, four, five more fish in a day, okay? All right, here you go. True suspending, Rising, sinking, I'm gonna show you how to do it. If you're using Rapala baits, it's pretty easy because you can pick the lure right out of the box and it will do that, okay? In the Rapala family of suspending jerk baits, your Husky Jerk and your X-Rap out of the box are Steady Eddy. They are true suspenders. Right in the middle of the water column, horizontal, but we've got two baits, and they're, they're awesome baits, that out of the pack do exactly what we talked about. We have the Shadow Wrap, small bill model, deep bill model, that out of the pack sits slightly head down and actually sinks very slowly, okay? You don't even need to modify these. Right, so the shadow wraps are your downturn suspending jerk baits for when those conditions are right. Then they have a suspending jerk bait called a shadow wrap shad. Little bit smaller suspending jerk bait, shallow build, deep build, just like the regular shadow wrap. But the shadow wrap shad out of the box, no mods need it. Head up. Slow rise, okay? So man, if you're lazy, you don't wanna do any modifications, Rapala makes some great ones that out of the pack do that. But let's get into how we can modify this bait to get it to be head down or head up, okay? And just imagine, close your eyes, this could be any jerk bait that you have in your box. If you're not using Rapala, this could be a Strike King, this could be a Berkeley, a Pradco, a Lucky Craft, a Mega, whatever. This could be any jerk bait you have. We can do, we can make certain mods to this lure that when it sits horizontally out of the pack, there's times you want that, right? Steady conditions, steady jerk bait. But what if the water temperature is falling, the conditions are getting crappy, it's going downhill? We want that thing to go nose down, okay? The way we're gonna do that is by adding a little weight to the front of this bait, right? To the front half of this bait, to get that, to get that jerk bait to sit nose down, we wanna add a little bit of weight to the front. And I wanna show you a couple different ways to do it. It's real easy. First one, guys, is changing out your treble hook. 
This is probably the most simple modification to make, which is adding a larger treble hook to that front hook. The hook closest to the bill, the, clo the hook closest to the head. We're gonna go one or one and a half sizes up, okay? This is just an example. Um, right here, we've got a size six treble. I'm gonna replace it with a size five or a size four on the belly, okay? We're gonna go one, one, one and a half, even two sizes up to get that bait to sit nose down. That's a bigger hook, which means it's a heavier hook, which means that when we put it on the front, it brings the head down, and guess what else that extra weight does? It causes that bait to fall just a little bit. So a bigger hook is a great way to do that. Also, let me mention that VMC has a bladed hybrid treble, which has a little blade on it. That little blade is even a little bit more weight. So a lot of times that bladed treble helps you get that motion more, helps you get a little bit more of that slow sink. That blade also a lot of times will get more bites, especially in clear water. So we're gonna add a bigger treble. Another easy way, if you don't wanna mess with your trebles, adding weight. And the two easiest ways to add a little weight to the front of that bait, suspend strips. Uh, Storm makes suspend strips, suspend dots. They're basically lead, lead tape is what it is. You can add a little right to that throat section. One to three strips, one to four dots. You get that motion, it sinks slow. You could also use um, a bell sinker or a teardrop drop shot weight. But use a light one because tungsten's dense. So as you start adding actual weights, you get more of that and a faster sink. So be careful if you're using that one. Suspend strips, suspend dots, great way to go. Chain that treble hook, great way to go. Okay, uh, so nose down, change your hook, add some weight, and here's your last component. When you want that thing to be nose down, slow sink, here it goes. And we're gonna talk more about this in our last segment, but choose fluorocarbon. Fish that jerk bait when you want it nose down, slow sink, Fish it on fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is a line type that is dense. Fluorocarbon sinks. So when I want that bait to be nose down, I'm changing that treble, I'm adding a little weight, and I'm fishing it on fluorocarbon, which is gonna help it sit in that nose down position, and it's gonna help it sink very slow, okay? Falling conditions, falling bait. Okay, now let's get to when we want this bait nose up, slightly rising. And this is for those conditions, again, where things are rising, things are looking up, the temperature's rising, right? We're gonna make some of the same modifications along with a few changes, especially this right here. And we're gonna get this lure to sit nose up and rise slowly, okay? The position of the bait, we're gonna achieve it the same way, but we're gonna put that bigger hook in the back. For this one, I like to use a hook that's a half to one size bigger. Don't get too crazy in the back. So we're gonna get that little bit bigger treble. Another great example. Here we have a shadow wrap. We've got all sixes on it. Instead of putting that five on the belly, now I'm gonna put that five on the rear. And that's gonna give me that ballast to have that upward positioning, okay? But now, we gotta get this bait to rise slowly. We have to get this bait to rise slowly. And there's two mods we're gonna use to get this bait to rise slowly. The one is replacing that hook closest to the front with something that gives it buoyancy. And the answer to that is a feathered treble. Uh, VMC has this amazing hybrid treble, feathered hybrid treble. Uh, it uses synthetic. A lot of these feathered trebles use chicken feathers or duck feathers, marabou. 
whatever the case is, but I love this synthetic one, we're going to replace that front hook with the same size hook or even slightly smaller with a feather on it. And that feather provides buoyancy, which is going to help you with that positioning. Last but not least, and this is the key to getting a bait to rise slowly, if you're not using the Shadow Wrap Shad, and it is to switch your line choice from fluorocarbon to monofilament. Guys, old school monofilament, this is the way we're gonna get this bait to slowly rise. Just like fluorocarbon had its strengths, its properties, fluorocarbon's dense, it's heavy, it sinks, mono floats. Mono has the properties that wanna pull a lure up. So when we have these upturn conditions, when we want that bait head up, slightly rising, and I'm not talking about floating, I'm talking about just barely rising, we're gonna switch our line choice to mono to help pull that bait up, okay? Man, these are, these are little, tiny little tricks. Even just that positioning, that head up positioning, when things are on the upturn, can get you one, three, five more bites. Even as simple as head down, even if it's not really sinking at all, head down positioning, when conditions are tanking, can get you more bites, right? So these little mods are tricked out. We're, now we're trying to help you get dialed in to get even more bites. Um, man, this is, this is some high level stuff. We're talking about suspending jerk baits. We're talking about a lure that catches them in almost every condition. It's a lure you gotta have in your box. Um, We've got one more episode. I hope you've been enjoying this series. We got one more. Next week, we're gonna be talking about something really important to this, and that is our tackle. Our rod, or reel. We're gonna be getting back into the line. We're gonna reiterate a little bit about mono and fluoro. But hang in there, because next week, we're gonna be talking about the right tackle to help fish a suspending jerkbait. I hope you're enjoying this one. This is the ultimate guide to suspending jerkbaits. If you like what you're seeing, if you like this info, subscribe to my channel. It's right there. Just hit that button, it'll take a minute. Subscribe to my channel. If you're already subscribed, you gotta tell your friends. Don't keep this to yourself. Tell your friends about Mike Iaconelli Fishing on YouTube. We're here to help you become a better angler.